I have heard every reason for why people think that they are literally unable to learn a language, whether it's they're too old, too dumb, too busy, uh, too broke, any number of things. The thing is, every one of these reasons why you may feel like you're unable to learn a language, they're all myths. They're not true. So in this video, I'm going to debunk five common language learning myths, explain where they might be coming from and what you might want to consider instead. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jamie. I'm a language coach and my job is helping online language learners find an approach that works for them so they can stay consistent and motivated long term. So if that sounds good to you, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video every Wednesday. The first myth is one of the most common and it's that you're too old to learn a language. This can look like a couple of different things. It could look like somebody being above like 18 and thinking that the, the fluency like gate has cut off. I don't know what that means, but people have said that to me. I've heard that because they're at a point where they are no longer able to pronounce things without an accent, that it's impossible or that It'll take too long because children, they learn how to speak their native language really, really quickly, right? And so as an adult, we have jobs, we have lives, we just don't have that kind of time. So it's just not possible. All of those are wrong. All of those are like incorrect. Despite the fact that there is no cutoff for fluency, despite the fact that you may have to try a little bit harder for pronunciation than you might want to, um, the one thing that I really want to focus on right now is the idea that children learn languages quickly. Um, they don't, not really, not when you think about it. Let's say that it's going to take you two years to get conversationally fluent. That's a general, like that's not a rule. That's just a pretty good, decent approximation of what might be a reasonable expectation depending on a bunch of different factors. Let's say two years. Think about the average two-year-old. Can the average two-year-old speak? Depending on the two-year-old, but most people generally speaking to get to like the level of fluency that I'm speaking at now, that doesn't happen in two years even for children. In your native language, it takes a lot more than two years. It takes like five years of total constant immersion and then you have to realize that k through five in you know the united states k through five is where you learn how to use your native language correctly you learn grammar rules you know you learn new vocabulary all sorts of things this is when it first starts becoming explicit education where you're like taught specifically to communicate in a way that's appropriate and you know fluent whatever it is but by then, children have already had five years of constant immersion. Like they don't have any choice but to communicate in the language if they want to express their needs. Now imagine that you're in a similar place where you are forced to communicate in your target language for five years before you have any explicit education. You're gonna pick up a lot more than a child is. Like if you go and live in a country where they speak your target language natively, and you're there for five years, it's not even a comparison. There is no comparison. You're gonna be significantly more ahead than a five-year-old child would be. Because the difference is that you would be intentionally learning. And when you are intentionally learning for however many years, it, it's, it's gonna put you so much more ahead of a child who is not intentionally learning. The second myth is one that I don't feel like is really necessarily like front of mind for a lot of language learners. Like they feel this myth, but when you say it out loud, they're like, oh yeah, obviously like that's not accurate, but that's not how I feel emotionally. And that myth is that you have to be perfect. A lot of language learners are absolutely terrified of being imperfect. We're afraid of not having the right pronunciation. We're afraid of not conjugating appropriately. We're afraid of using the wrong vocabulary. We're afraid of so many things that will prove that we are not a native speaker, that we are learning this language. Because the thing is that learning another language is a really vulnerable thing. And so we kind of tend to want to hide behind that and like, convince other people, oh no, we speak, I speak this language natively, I, I'm really confident in this language. And so, no, I'm not vulnerable, I'm not embarrassed, I know what I'm doing. And so a lot of language learners tend to want to hide 
the fact that they're not 100% certain all the time. And that fear holds a lot of people back. The thing to remember about imperfection though, is that we don't even speak our native language perfectly. We don't. Nobody speaks their native language perfectly because the point of speaking a language is not to be perfect and grammatically perfect and pronouncing correctly all the time and conjugating correctly all the time. That's not the point. The point is to communicate. It's just that in our native language, we're not ever going to be questioned about whether or not we're speaking correctly. I mean, if you're, you know, white, but that's another topic altogether. I mean, think about it. How many times do you listen to a popular song that you love the song, but you're not 100% sure on the lyrics? How many times do you see people using bad grammar or no grammar or pronunciation on the internet when they're like typing and you don't even, you don't think about it, you don't care because you get the point. You understand what they're trying to communicate. With our native language, we tend to just kind of ignore our imperfections because we're used to it. But because speaking a new language is a new experience, it's a vulnerable experience, and we're not 100% sure all the time, we just glamp on to every single imperfection and fear that so much. But you're never gonna be perfect. And that's okay, because if you were perfect, you'd sound funny. <laughs> the third language learning myth that I wanna talk about in this video it makes me feel kind of sad. And this myth is that you're not smart enough to learn a language. Now this can come from a couple of different places. This could come from taking language classes in school and getting made fun of and bullied for, you know, not knowing a word or pronouncing it incorrectly or, you know, whatever it is. It could come from having like a really bad teacher that wasn't accepting of mistakes and accepting of learning new things and really creating a space where you were safe to be vulnerable. It could come from trying over and over and over to learn a language and then always failing every time. And so assuming that it's a you thing and not something else. That one I see a lot with my clients especially. If you genuinely believe that you're not smart enough to learn a language, I wanna help you restructure that a little bit. If you fail to learn a language or if you haven't done well in school and made to feel bad about it, it's not because you're not smart enough, it's because of whatever's happening in the world around you, whether it's the people who are around you or the approaches that you're using or, you know, whatever comes up in life that keeps derailing you all the time. I mean, I get it. It's easy to feel dumb and inferior when you find a course or a book or an app that has all these raving reviews and it seems to work for everybody, but it doesn't work for you. And so you assume, well, this has worked for everybody else, but it hasn't worked for me, so it must be a me thing. I must just be dumb, or I must be unable to learn a language, or, you know, whatever comes from that. And honestly, this is one of the main reasons why I started coaching, is to show language learners that it's not that there's something wrong with you. You're not unintelligent, you're not you know, lazy or any number of different adjectives is that you need to find an approach that works for you. And thanks to the internet, there are like unlimited approaches. You just have to know how to sift through and find the one that works for you. Once you find that approach that works for you, then you'll start to see and gain that confidence in yourself because you'll start to see that you can actually get closer and closer and closer to your goals. Is there a language learning myth that you know is a myth logically, but emotionally you still believe? Let me know in the comment section below. Language learning myth number four is the idea that you can't learn unless you are immersed, are in a classroom, have the right app, have the right book, have more time in your life, whatever excuse that you can put in there. This one tends to come from like the hodgepodge of information that there is online about different language learning resources. Every language learning app saying the best way to learn language, the fastest, most efficient, whatever it is, different ways to learn a language has you assume that there is a preferable or perfect or best way to learn a language when it's just not true. And so even if it's subconscious, if you believe you need to find that perfect method, whether it's a classroom with a teacher or you're immersed in it or whatever the case may be, if you believe that unless you have that thing, you are unable to learn a language, then you're just not gonna try. The reality is there are no rules to learning a language. 
And if somebody tells you otherwise, then they're probably trying to sell you something that you don't actually need. You absolutely don't need to be in a classroom or abroad or any number of things to learn a language. And in fact, even if you do accomplish those things, there's absolutely no guarantee that you'll, you know, all of a sudden just whoop and like reach your goals, be fluent, whatever it is. In reality, all it takes is a show that you like in the language. All it takes is some fun vocabulary. All it takes is recording yourself speaking on your phone. All it takes is a free app where you connect with native speakers. Any number of these strategies and approaches and resources might work for you. It's just a matter of finding the one that does work for you. It doesn't matter if you're abroad or if you're in a classroom or if you have a teacher. Those don't actually, they're not hard and fast rules. They're not black and white rules. And if you can't get those things for any reason, that doesn't have anything to do with your ability to learn a language. You just have to find a different avenue. And the last myth about learning languages is the idea that you don't have the discipline. A lot of language learners realize that language learning is a long-term thing and that you have to be consistent over the long term. And when they aren't able to stay consistent in the long term, again, they assume it's something within them. They assume it's that they're lazy, they don't have the discipline, they don't have the motivation. There's something inherently wrong with them that is like creating this problem. Now, fair warning, this next piece of advice might seem kind of like frou-frou, BS, service level, not actually helpful. Like, you've got this advice, but I promise it's not. You are just fine the way that you are. There's nothing wrong with your discipline or lack thereof. There's nothing wrong with your, you know, level of motivation, all sorts of things. It's not a you problem. In reality, it's a problem with the approach that you're taking and it's not your fault. Like I said, language learning can look like whatever it is that you want it to look like. And just because you try and sit down and study every single day and you can't because you get bored of it or you get distracted or you forget, it's not something that's wrong with you. It's just that approach doesn't work for you and you have to find the approach that will work for you. It's your job to find what approach works for you. Fortunately, that's exactly what I teach my coaching clients with my 90 day program called The Method. I teach language learners how to understand what it is they want to achieve, how to achieve it, and of course, how to stick to it in the long term. And if you relate to this video, you'd be a great candidate to join us. So if you relate to this video, make sure to click the link below in the description to learn more about the method. And if you like this video, make sure to check out these videos next. Otherwise, have a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Okay. Jeez.